for having me. I'm very excited. When I first was invited to, to come, I, uh, I was thrilled. I was thrilled. So thank you all for coming today. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, um, even though I got that great reading of my bio. Um, I was in corporate America for about 17 years, and I loved it. I had great bosses. I had great mentors. And um, I had lots of really fun projects and got to really, you know, use my brain and, and focus on the back-end operations of businesses. Um, when my daughter was born, uh, 17, almost 17 years ago, in 2001, I went off on my own and I started an online baby gift boutique called Blueberry Babies. And what I learned by doing that was that all of the skills that I had in corporate America that made me so successful, none, not really one of them translated into being a small business owner. So there I was, thinking I knew what I was doing, and I had to learn credit card processing, I had to learn how to grow an email list. This was before Constant Contact and MailChimp, so I had to figure out how to keep in touch with my clients. And it was also before Shopify. So all of the things, I mean, you could practically start a store on your phone right now, probably at lunchtime, and have all the different systems connect by logging into UPS and all of these different things. But back then, I really had to figure out how to integrate all the pieces. And so um, what happened was, along the way, people would ask me, how did you do that? How did you figure out how to get the UPS tracking number that you were cutting and pasting before into the shopping cart? And how did you get the invoice out into QuickBooks without retyping it? Because that's what we were all doing, unless we were you know, NeimanMarcus.com. So, um, so I figured it out, and, and people would ask me, and I would say, come to my neighborhood in Boston, buy me a martini so I can walk home after I've had my cocktail, and I'll try to save you as much time as I can just by telling you the steps that I took um, to get where I am. And then one day, um, one of my, it was a neighbor, he asked me out to coffee, and, and I told him how I thought he should start his business, and he said, can I hire you to do that? And by that point, I, since I had sort of figured everything out on the back end, I was running a distribution center. So the UPS guy and I were like this, but that wasn't really that much fun for me anymore. So I said to, um, to um, this client, yes, I'll absolutely do that. And that's when I became Rocket Girl. So that's almost eight years ago. And I'm fortunate it was full time almost immediately. And, uh, and it's all virtual. So two and a half years ago when I moved from Boston, I didn't lose one single client. And so it's a lot of fun. So I get to work in my Nike clothes and look out at a lake and uh, work with amazing clients. So I want to tell you some things. So doing this for eight years, I've worked with, I don't know, probably a couple hundred business owners. And I've seen really the ugly back ends of, um, of how they run, some of them run their businesses. And they come to me for help. So what I want to try to do is shortcut you guys to getting to the next level. So there are things that definitely let people know that you're in business for real. And then there are things that are just clues that you're not taking it seriously, maybe. And I want to try to step you through some of those. So the first one is your email address. So if you notice my email address, it's Belinda at RocketGirlSolutions.com. It's not RocketGirlSolutions.com at Gmail, at Yahoo, at Hotmail. So that's a real big tip, and that's one people see immediately. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that when you pay for your domain, your domain meaning your URL, the rocketgirlsolutions.com, you already have the ability usually to have email for free. I use Gmail, which is paid, but even with that service, it's only $5 a month. So this is not something that's expensive. And most of the time, you can, if you want to use Google, you can call them on the phone. They'll help you set it up. They're very helpful. Or you can you know, hire someone to help you do that independently. The other thing is to have a professional uh, signature. You don't necessarily have to have a logo, but have your name, have your title, and definitely have your phone number. It's so simple to do, and I can't tell you how often I'm I'm, I have a meeting with someone looking for their phone number, I'm searching in my email, and it's not in their signature. So that's just actually being polite. I love your rocket launcher. That's your that's Yes, your it is. I love Thank you. I, I, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> It's fun. It's, it's fun. I, it was interesting. When I started this company, I was 50 years old, and I was really worried about being Rocket Girl. And the person that helped me with my branding, I said, oh my god, I'm like 50 years old. I can't be Rocket Girl. And he said, you're going to be Rocket Girl when you're 90. Just do it. So that's what I did. And it's been really smart, because people remember it. They recognize it. My license plate is Rocket Girl. <laughs> the next thing you need is a beautiful business card. 
And I remember, you know, in the 80s and 90s, they were like $300. Remember that for the box? It was a big deal. So these are business cards that were professionally designed by my guy, Mark Tatro. Um, a couple hundred dollars investment to have the design. We had them printed at Moo. And when I first started and I didn't have a lot of money or I was a little nervous to spend it, 50 cards, 19 bucks. Like, small investment. But when I hand someone my card, I always get a response like, oh, it's so nice. The other thing, because it's thick and it's big, the other thing is it looks like my website. So if you look at Sarah, Sarah's um, card here, those um, uh, diamonds are all over her website. That's her logo. Robin Kivit, the same thing, this apple that's on the front, that's on her website. And Christina Brody, she uses the, air, the um, bullseye. So it's important that all of your marketing um, look the same. In fact, I'm going to show you some examples right now. Actually, I'm going to wait. Let me wait a minute. Okay, so LinkedIn. So this is my little brother, Tim. He knows I'm doing this. Um, so the first thing you can notice is, can you see the gray square around his picture? Um, well, maybe you can't see it on the screen, but his picture is really small because a few years ago, LinkedIn, they made the pictures larger, the, your ability to have a larger picture, but Tim didn't get the memo. He also has, his chin is cut off. I fixed this for him already, so he's <laughs> But his chin is cut off, there's a, like a bald guy behind him, and there's this blonde woman he tells me is really hot, but it doesn't matter. So, right, okay, so now my brothers are identical twins. So this is my brother Tom. Okay, so you can see the difference here. Um, and it's an important difference. And so it's, it's good to have a professional headshot made. And this is mine. So my picture I got um, at a place called Portrait Simple. There's one in Trumbull. I had it done in Boston. I moved here two and a half years ago from Boston. But um, you can go, they'll take, I don't know, 2,000 pictures. You can buy 15 of them for 200 bucks, or you can get a headshot for 50, I think. And um, they'll let you change their, your clothes. I mean, it's really great. Now, this isn't me outside against a brick wall, but you don't need that. You know, you just need a clear image. Now, there's some other tips here for solo professionals and small business owners. You can see my brothers have these gigantic jobs at these really big companies, but I don't. So putting chief rocket launcher there is not going to be meaningful at all. But what I do is I use the headline, business manager for solo professionals and small business owners. So right away, it identifies me as what I am. So for small business owners and solos, that's really important. Do you, do, I'm using the word solo. Do you guys know what I mean by that? So people who work on their own, so financial planners, coaches, nutritionists, uh, me. So people who work on their own and provide usually professional services to, to other um, businesses. The other thing that um, you can do is you can see right here. So you can get your own URL on LinkedIn. So this URL is forward slash my, my first and last name. I wouldn't want to use my business because it's probably not my last business in my life, but, hopefully, but it's for now my name. Um, and then over on the connections, you want to try to get 500 connections. There's sort of a cache with LinkedIn. It sort of shows you know, that you've put some effort in. Um, once, you're, once you're at 501, nobody knows if you have 10,000 or 502. But that's just a little... Um, detail to handle if, if you can. Oh, you guys can interrupt me at any time. You won't throw me off. So if you have any questions. Can you say what you said, what URL again? Yes. So right here. So when, when you get LinkedIn, it's linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash some crazy thing that they come up with, right? So there's a place, and I can't tell you right now because they keep changing it, but if you want to stay afterwards, we can look and I'll show you. Um, but it's on your profile and you can, you can change the URL. And um, I was lucky because my name was available, but, but if your name is Mary Smith, it's probably not, but you can customize it in some other way, um, creative way. Mm -hmm. I have a question. What if you can hack very clearly and I could use them and investigate it? Would I do that? Um, if I got that warning, I probably would not be on LinkedIn. Um, I would use other uh, online uh, ways to represent myself, like a website mm -hmm. or other social media. Okay. Oh, does that look jumbly? Yes. Okay, well, it's, it's just text, so we're not going to worry about that. So this is my client, Martha Miser, who I totally love. And this is her website before, before my team, and this is her website after. So you can see... 
with small changes, I mean, this is actually a pretty major makeover, but you can see how, how it makes a difference. So she already had a logo, but it wasn't on her website. Welcome to Aduro Consulting right here. That's, um, it, we just don't do that anymore. So you, you, don't, you wanna go right into what you do. Having a testimonial on your homepage. Um, her social media is present um, in the top. <clears throat> and now about that, she only uses LinkedIn. So if you only use LinkedIn, only have the LinkedIn icon. The worst thing is to have social media icons. When you click on them, it's like a ghost town. You, it's better to have none or to have the ones that you're actually using. So in her case, she's not tweeting, she's not on Facebook, she's just doing uh, LinkedIn. So that's important. She also makes it easy to contact her at the bottom. She has a subscribe button to her newsletter and then learning more about her services. So you really wanna lay the web page out in a very simple way. So again, there are things that tell people that you're in business for real and you wanna to try to take care of those. This is an interesting one. Um, almost every week someone asks me, how do I get more clients? I need more clients, I need more um, business. What do I do, what do I do? They ask me, should I do Facebook ads? Um, should I buy a list? Should I cold call? Um, what are the best networking groups to go to? And my first question is always, how are you keeping in touch with the people you already know? And most of the time, people are not doing that because they say, oh, my friends aren't gonna hire me. Oh, my old boss isn't gonna hire me. But that's actually um, not true because what happens is it's, people refer naturally all the time, so you wanna stay in front of them. So a couple of stories I can think about. One is my, was my neighbor in Boston, Alexa. She had a very specific niche. She taught physicians how to be better observers by looking at art. Okay, like, oh my God, right? How specific is that? So um, I, I was starting out, she was starting out, so I helped her with the newsletter. And some time passed and I ran into her in the hall and I said, are you still doing your newsletter? And she said, yeah. And I said, how come I'm not getting it? Maybe there's something wrong, an old address. And she kind of looked embarrassed and she said, I don't send it to you. And I said, well, why not? And she said, well, you really can't help me. But what she didn't know was that my daughter was at this a private school in Boston and several times a week during certain seasons of the year, I was standing next to you on the soccer field the um, president or C CEO actually of the Faulkner Hospital, which is like Mass General Hospital, it's like huge, right? She had no idea. Now, if she sent me my newsletter, I wouldn't have run up to him and say, oh my God, oh my God, you have to know this. But if he had said something to me that triggered it, I absolutely would have said something like, you know what, I know this person, I have no idea if they can help you, but would you like me to connect you? And that's how that happens um, over and over and over. So it's really important to stay in touch with the people that you know. And here's, now I'm gonna show the examples. Here are some of the ways that I do that. So the first way that I do that is I publish a newsletter every other Thursday, and this is completely my secret weapon. So by writing one article, I can, my list is between 16 and 1700 people. That was over time. When I started, it was probably 600. Um, but it's a way for me to talk about my life, tell a story, prove, you know, show a point and offer value now, I do things differently than others. Often there's no like call to action, there's no buy this thing. It's really just genuinely me authentically um, giving information to people. So what happens is, as a result of this, I'll have people that are on my list that will call me or schedule time on my calendar and say, I've been thinking about hiring you for a year and I have no idea who they are, not a clue. I have to look at on LinkedIn or look when they joined my list. So this is a great way to do that. The other thing that you don't see here is there's a thing at the bottom called things I can't live without. And usually I write about the squeezer for, um, for the lemon for my martini or this clicker or you know just something, my Roomba I wrote about last week. I got a Roomba for Christmas, <laughs> it's super cool. So that's the way that, um, so that's a way to, show my personality and have people feel more comfortable with me because the kind of work I do, we really are going under the covers. You know, How are you taking care of your business? And, and I want them to feel comfortable and they need to trust me. And so the way that that happens is I show them who I am. Are you able to look at analytics you know, mm -hmm. and see if people are actually reading it or? Well, how that works is, um, there's so there's a pixel that's blank and it's Constant Contact and MailChimp put it into the news, into the whatever you're sending out automatically. When that, when you load images, that pixel fires, 
And so even though you don't see it, that's what triggers. So people could read it, it's not exact. People could be reading it and um, not loading the images and you wouldn't necessarily know. And then there's just stuff like one time I wrote about my daughter's headmaster because I was so impressed with something he did. And it kept saying that he didn't read it, but he saw me, he hugged me, like, oh, thank you. You know, so it's not exact. I, I don't worry about it that much. There are some clients that I have that really get wrapped around the axle about why didn't they open it. It's just more of a, I think of all of this as sprinkling. I'm just like throwing it out there. I'm just sprinkling my stuff everywhere, and you never know who it's going to hit and where. Yeah, I'm just thinking if there's a small business that actually does <coughs> Yeah, you absolutely can. You just want to be careful because most people don't know that and you don't want to be creepy. Right. That's the only problem with that. But there are subtle ways you can do that. Um, there are so definitely ways you can do that. And some of them have conditional logic, like if you click this, then send the follow-up that. Right. So that's usually a little bit more expensive. MailChimp is free, up to 2,000 people. Constant Contact is not. Um, but those are just... Do you like MailChimp? Do you like MailChimp? Totally. I'm a, um, I'm a business partner with Constant Contact, and my newsletter is still in Constant Contact because i got to find five minutes to move it. But, um, but it's by far a better platform. There's more automation. I have a WordPress website, and you can do crazy stuff that um, you can. So there's something called Infusionsoft. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's like $250, $300 a month. It does a lot of marketing automation, but I figured out there's the cost of me setting it up, but it's free after that, where I've saved clients up to one guy, $2,000 a month, just unplugging all this expensive stuff and using MailChimp, because there's automation. There's lots of different ways you can do that. Good to know. Mm -hmm. So this is my newsletter. This is something that um, is also very effective, and I only do it when I want to bring more business in, because it happens for me pretty fast. So it's called the check-in email. And so what this is, is, um, so I have a, a sort of in my a virtual container of people I like that I stay in touch with, and I call, and I call it relationship marketing. So th the only criteria for being in this sort of virtual container is that I like you. It's not I like you and you can hire me, or you've worked with me before. There are people that have hired me before that are not in this bucket. So it's just people I like. Um, and I keep in touch with them in a systematic way. So if I want to crank up business, I'll send two emails a day, and you only want to send two because they're going to answer you, and you want to be able to answer back because the whole idea is not to blast it out and then you know be um, pummeled. But um, so this is very simple. I hope you had a nice weekend. I thought of you when I was at the farmers market. We bought an organic turkey for Thanksgiving. Business is great. How are you? Love you know love to catch up when you get a chance. Send. I don't um, track or get mad or upset if they don't email me back. I just figure they're busy, you know, they're doing their thing. So, but this is just a way to stay in front of them. And they, I don't talk about work other than I'm doing a cool project, but it's not, do you want to work with me? How about that project? I, I never do that. Um, so I, you don't need to if you're, yes. So this is what I do. So that's a really good question. So how it works is I have my newsletter. And when I started my newsletter, I put every single person I knew in the newsletter. And I wrote at the bottom um, of the welcome. Um, the, the, in the beginning, it said, this is my first issue. And then I said, I've added you because we have had a relationship in the past. If you don't want to receive it, please unsubscribe. From that point on, it's only opt-in. So I'm going to ask you all tonight if you want to join my email newsletter. And if you do, great but it's then self-selecting. Um, then from that point, I have, so, th so that's over here. Then I have the people that I keep in touch with, but I don't, I don't do prospecting, like I don't do that. I just think of everybody as people I like, and if they know what I do because I send them my newsletter and I have coffee with them and I try to help them and I'm genuine, um, I mean, that's why I'm here now. I like to share what, to help people. So if I just sort of sprinkle that around, people hire me. But I do know a lot of people that worry about that, and there's no need. If the way that, the reason I have this relationship marketing plan is because 
I was the sole breadwinner in my family, and so I needed to go to sleep at night. Like, I checked all the boxes. I couldn't go to sleep and think, I should have done this, I should have done this. So I decided with someone who helped me how I was going to market my business, and it was the newsletter when I started immediately. It was the check-in emails. It was, um, and this, this all sort of expands and contracts depending on how much work I have. When I am going crazy and I have 40 hours of work ahead of me with, you know, then I'm, I'm still writing my newsletter, but I'm not doing all this other stuff as much. But as it changes, I do the check-ins and I, I, just, keep, I just keep stirring it. And it's worked for eight, almost eight years. So I do my newsletter every other week. I try really hard. Sometimes it's three weeks. For someone starting out, I would recommend doing it once a month, getting in the groove, because it's like my newsletter, I don't just sit down and write it in constant contact and hit the button. I write it, it goes to a content editor to make sure that, um, it sets, that it sounds like me. Because I grew up, I went to Catherine Gibbs, I write things like enclosed her with please find, you know what I mean? So you really have to, um, I, I want to make sure that it's me and it's funny and that I'm not too, in the beginning, I'm especially embarrassed to be myself and mail it out you know, to people. And then it goes to an editor because I'm not great at grammar. Um, but what happens after I write my newsletter is it goes on LinkedIn as an article. I tweet about it. It goes on Facebook. Like I use it like crazy. So that's, that's the thing. So it's worth the effort and it's worth the expense. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the way that, um, so think about a blog for a second. So what you'd have to do is someone would have to think about you in front of their computer, go to your page and read it. Like that's a lot of steps and they might think about you in their car. But if you're on their phone, you could be in the grocery store with them, right? Because they were looking at your newsletter. However, I put my newsletter on my website. So people can read it there. And they haven't done it recently because I've written like 92, but there have been people in the past that said, I just read everything you wrote and I want to work with you. So definitely put it on your website for a number of reasons. One, it builds um, search engine optimization. Um, you know, good, I can't think of the word, but because Google likes the websites to change. Right, right, right. And then, and then the other thing is you want people to see a repository of your, of your thought. So that's a good way to do it. Okay. So that's the check-in email. Then there's something called linking out. So most of the time, we're spending our time putting um, stuff up that we did that's super cool. You know, like I wrote this thing, I did this, whatever, I'm speaking. So what this is is a little different. It's called linking out. So you have to put a timer on, 10 minutes, because you know LinkedIn is like a vacuum on your face. So Michelle Morris is my client. She wrote this article, 10 Reasons Why You Should Not Try to Time the Market. And I just wrote, great Michelle, or, you know, great article, Michelle, and very valuable information, thanks. So one year, I did this to my, this guy named Mark. He was a serial entrepreneur. I met him one time. He was like, used to date one of my friends, and he was friends with my ex-husband. Hadn't seen him in a long time. Started a new business. I wrote, congratulations, Mark. That year, he paid me $15,000. Because he hired me, he's like, oh, I need her. Because I was sprinkling. I'm sprinkling all over the place. So um, this is a great thing. I've also I just got a big project. I think she's probably paid me three or $4,000 so far on Facebook. Because I noticed that she knew someone that I knew from somewhere else. And I said, how do you guys know each other? Um, authentic, you know? And she said, we should talk. I'm like, OK. So it's good to do. So this is interesting. I think one of the people, groups of people we forget to keep in touch with are our current clients. So I'll just explain what this is briefly. So the way that I pro provide my services is that people buy one, five, or 10 hour chunks of my time, they prepay it. And it, I call it the Rocket Girl debit card. So what I do is every Monday morning, I send my clients an email and I let them know how much time is left. They're, the time is good for a year. So when, it's, when is it going to expire? And then to add more time to their card, and then I have an online scheduler. So what this does is every Monday morning, it makes my clients think, oh, okay. So they know if they, if they are down to zero or you know, an hour, they'll click and they'll buy more time. Or they can just hit reply. I started in the beginning so they could just hit reply and say, oh, could you do this thing? And every Monday morning, somebody buys another debit card because they realize that their time is gone. So keeping in touch with your current clients is a good thing. Even though you're interacting with them all the time in a project, this is separate. Um, the handwritten note is also uh, fabulous. Um, again, my, my designer did it because 
you know, like the, we, I was just talking to Crystal, the library lady. We were talking about even something as small as the kerning, the spaces between the, the letters. A graphic artist can really make things look beautiful where if I try to do this in, you know, Word or whatever, it, it would look, it just wouldn't look that great. And I have had these for five years. I just keep ordering more. But what this is about is one day one of my clients, something happened, she was having a bad day, and so I have the benefit of all this rockety fun stuff. So I sent her some um, eraser tops that looked like rockets, and I just said, hi, Robin, just wanted to give your day a little lift off. And this is the picture that she posted on Facebook, which was awesome. And then this is um, send out cards. Do you guys know what send out cards is? It's an online service, you can order cards, and I just wanna show these to you, because this is a cool way. I've always thought real estate agents could use these. So my guy, Mark, again, he designed the cover, and, um, and then I take pictures. So this is the Grand Canyon. Um, this is me in jail in Arizona. I'll pass them around. But essentially, it's a way for me to, um, to send, I, I'm not doing it right now, but when I did, I would send it out to about 60 people. And you go to their offices later and they're on their bulletin board, right? Because they're like, oh, she sent me this thing. Send out cards. Yeah, it's SOC it's S -O -C. Is it? No, it's sendoutcards.com. And you're, they're physically being mailed? Yeah, mail. yeah. And, and you, you just want to make sure it doesn't, you want to, like mine, you'll see they look like they're mass produced. You never want to trick people. It's, it's not even tricking. It's like um, one time I sent an email out and it looked like a personal email, but I sent it to a lot of people and they got confused. And I was like, oh, I can't believe, you know, you never want to do that. You want it to look like what it is. Like my newsletter, everybody knows a lot of people are getting it. And then the other thing that I do is I do a holiday card and my graphic artist does it. I do New Year's cards because it's sort of like a fresh start and it kind of goes with my brand but I can pass these around as well. Just to give you an idea of, um, these are, they're not inexpensive when I do it, it's hundreds of dollars, but um, it's just a nice way to extend the brand and wish someone Happy New Year. Whoops, wrong way. So make sure that you keep in touch with the people that you know in some kind of systematic way um, because it really matters. So imagine that you, um, you want to announce your website or you want to have a webinar or you want to send a send out card or even a holiday card, but your contacts are all over the place, right? <laughs> How many people here have their contacts all in one place? <laughs> right, 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 right. And it's, it's, not, um, it's, it's not easy, but what you want to do to get them all in one place, you want to get them into Excel. Because if you think about it, you, you really kind of stopped in growing your business if you can't keep in touch with people, right? And email is the way we do that. So you want to get everything in Excel. And I'm going to show you a very specific way to do that because this causes a lot of frustration for people. So when you're creating your spreadsheet, you want to make sure the columns don't have to be in this order, but they need to be these columns. So you want first name and last name to be separated in a different column. You don't even need to know Excel. This is all you need to do is just write these things at the top and email in a separate address. If you're going to use address, it needs to be street, city, state, zip, and then country if you're going to do that. Um, email address is enough if that's what you're going to if you're just going to do an email blast or a newsletter but if you have this other information it's nice to have and the reason you want to get it in excel is because once you do then there's a million tools that you can import it into to really leverage your business so these are just a few of them contactually is my um uh it's it's a crm it's like my address book um and mailchimp and constant contact you all know infusionsoft i mentioned and insightly is another um another uh um, CRM, another way to organize your contacts. But start with Excel. Start with Excel, yeah. And, and what some people don't know is that you can, um, it's, it's, not, um, it's not intuitive, but if someone wants to know, I can tell you specifically. You can export all your LinkedIn contacts, and you can start with that list. So if you've got 500,000, you know, however many LinkedIn contacts you have, you can um, export those. You can't export from Facebook, but you can export from um, email programs, get them all in one place. You don't have to worry so much about duplicates. If you're going to put it in MailChimp, it won't allow for duplicates of the same email address. Um, 
but it's very it's very powerful and it's it's something that when I did it it took a while um, but I never had to do it again because I take care of it. So how I do how I do that is the the first time I send out the newsletter, I put at the bottom very explicit language. Um, I've added to I've added you to the you're receiving this email because we've had a connection in the past. Um, if I've done this in error, please accept my apology and click unsubscribe. So just very genuinely like you know, I didn't do this to be malicious, we're connected in some way, and then people will opt out, and people opt out all the time. I, I look at it, the list, but I don't get upset about it, because you don't know, what they could be subscribed twice, or maybe they moved, or they got a job, or, you know, you just can't take anything personally, because it'll just take you off the tracks. I find it's more times than not, it's been seven twice. Yep. Right. Exactly. So make sure you that you do this, it's really critical. Um, it, it's probably the first thing I do with clients when I'm starting with them because once we, it takes the longest, it's painful, but once we do it, we can really um, leverage. So nobody likes to look at this stuff, right? We all have it, so I'll just even take it off the screen. Um, one of my clients, Mary, um, she was an interior a landscaper. So she was the one that put the trees up at the mall and the giant wreaths on the buildings and a very successful business over a million dollars, a bunch of employees, you know, a fleet of trucks and plants coming from Florida. And um, I was working with her on her, um, her website and we were launching a newsletter. And what happened was um, she was talking about expenses one day. She had a business manager named Sally who was one of her closest friends. And uh, Sally wasn't in, and I said to Mary, well, what about when you look at the bank reconciliations at the end of the month? You know, I mean, million dollar business, right? She needs to be paying attention to this. And she said, what do you mean? I said, you know, <laughs> when you sit down with Sally and you make sure the bank statements are matching and, and you look at your expenses, she said, well, I don't do that. I said, well, I'm sure, because I've been an office manager before. I said, let's go into your office. I'm sure there's some drawer right there where it's all there organized by month. And, there were no bank records. There were no bank records anywhere in the office. And what we figured out eventually was that Sally was stealing. And she stole like $30,000. And, uh, and so the problem with that is, is a couple. First, Mary was out $30,000, which she frankly didn't miss. But now the police are involved, right? It's like becomes like a thing. So that's an extreme example of watching your money. But I, I think the phone really has done us a disservice because I know I'm guilty of this. I look at my bank state, like I look at my expenses on my phone, but I miss stuff. And so it's really important um, to print out your statement or make it big on your screen, a old fashioned ruler, and just go down and look at every single expense. I know every year when I review my financials for my business, I always find some something that I don't know what it is. I canceled one yesterday. It was some Amazon Kindle thing. I don't even want to tell you how long I've had it and I just thought it was something my daughter had. 120 bucks a month. Like, go out to dinner, you know? So it's really important, and I, it was very eye-opening too when I moved here and I switched bank accounts. I found a couple of those. So really pay attention to that um, because it, it's important. And, and another thing too is really understand how much it costs to run your business. I know I, it, that's all right. <laughs> She's excited. Um, so I, uh, I, I knew a woman and she was in manufacturing and I did a little private label manufacturing when I had my, web, my website, my baby store. And a lot of times people think that if they make more, they'll make money. But really what happens a lot of times is they'll just work more and still not make money. So you really want to sit down with a financial professional if you're doing any kind of manufacturing and, and look at it. I had an embroidery machine and I did, um, like they have at Land's End and, or, um, yeah, or um, L.L. Bean, and I personalized baby gifts with it, and I hired a woman to come in and we counted how many stitches the design was. She had this whole formula, and I paid her hundreds of dollars. It wasn't a big deal, but I was making money, and it was important to know that. It's important because that's why we're working, and the other thing is to reduce the anxiety that we have as business owners out there alone trying to figure out, am I doing the right thing, am I doing the right thing? So that, that really helps. 
Okay, so this is especially true if we work, well, if we work at home, but let me tell you the story first. So there's this person I work with all the time. His name is Michael Katz, and I highly recommend his newsletter. His company is bluepenguindevelopment.com, and a lot of what I learned about staying in touch with people, I learned from him. And um, Blue Penguin Development. And the news, the pop-up will come up right away, and you can subscribe to his newsletter. Very insightful. And um, he, um, I went to his office the first time I met him, and uh, he, we were going out to lunch, and he pulled a um, memory stick out of his pocket. He stuck it in his computer, and being me, I'm like, what are you doing? And he said, oh, I'm going home after we, we talk, and I'm going to print this at home. And I said, well, why are you printing this at home? He said, well, my printer doesn't work. So here's this man who supported a family of five in a beautiful home. Everyone went to college, and he's not buying a printer because, I don't know, he thinks it's not a big deal, and so he's tolerating this. And what I found is, so I sat at his desk, I bought him a printer, and that was the end of that. But, but what I find is that we tolerate things. So especially working at home, it's important that if you need tape for your work, buy some for your desk. If you need a stapler, don't keep it in the kitchen. If you need scissors, don't use the one out of the block with the knives. Like, go buy your stuff, right? Um, it's really important. I have um, a chair that when I bought it, it was cr it's like uh, one of those uh, Herman Miller Aeron chairs. It was like 600 bucks. I sit in it every day. I'm on like year 10 with that chair. I don't have back aches. It's worth it. My, um, my desk is an Ikea dining room table, and, which means it's wide and it's also deep. So my monitors can be, I have three monitors. That's my the nice thing. Um, so I have three monitors and they can be pushed back and I still have room to put paper and my keyboard and whatever I need. So it's really critical to be comfortable where we're working and also have your um, family understand they're not to touch it. They, my family would not take anything off my desk in a million years. I mean, I jokingly refer to it, but it's my money-making like cockpit. You know, this is how I help provide for the family. So I, I take it seriously. And and the second that the technology starts to fail, I buy new. I, I have a, a pretty new computer. It is as fast as I need it to be. It was $500. I have three 24-inch monitors that it's really cool. When you move the mouse, it moves all across all three so I can have all these different things open. $100 each, the stand was 75 bucks. It's changed the way that I work. And so really be thoughtful about um, the tools and make sure that you invest in it because this is really work, what you're doing. And so these are some of the tools that I use every day, which I'll tell you a little bit about, and I'm happy to answer questions. So toggle is how I track my time because I work by the hour, and so I need to do that. Contactually is how I, um, it's sort of my address book. It's where all my uh, client information is. Um, not notes and things like that. I use Evernote for that, which should be on here. Um, Dropbox. So the way that I use, do that, does anyone know what Dropbox is? Oh, yeah. Okay. So the way I use Dropbox is, you know, Microsoft and even um, a Mac, they have like my documents folder. I don't have that. I have Dropbox and every single solitary file is in there so that literally on my way to Boston, if a client calls me and needs something, I can email it to them on my phone. Like everything is in there and it's all syncing across everywhere and it's backed up. If I accidentally delete it, they'll, they'll keep it for six months. So if there's a version or something. So, um, so I put everything in Dropbox. It's also great for your family photos. I can't tell you, I've twice in my life, I had to pay $1,700 to get a hard drive restored because I didn't want to lose Emily's fourth Christmas. So it's just a good thing to do. Um, Constant Contact, I think you know about. G Suite, I think it's called Google for Business now. They keep changing the name. But essentially, it's, it's just like free Gmail, except you can use your own domain. So my rocket girl solutions.com. Um, and it's nice because you have the power of um, Gmail inside your email for searching. Um, Microsoft Office, so at least um, Excel, Word, and PowerPoint. I have some clients that um, they use a Mac and they have pages or sheets and it really trips people up that are trying to work with you. So you can get the student edition, it's 120 bucks or something. So I really recommend doing that. The P is for Pandora. I listen to music all day. I have the paid version. I deserve it. It's five dollars, you know, or three ninety nine. So I consider that a tool as well. Stripe is how I do my credit card processing. If you're going to do that, Square is another option. Um, but I really like Stripe. Um, 
LastPass for password management, if you can imagine, I have right now 52 active clients and each one of them probably has between 10 and 50 passwords of, that I'm managing. So what that does is the first time you go to the site, you type in your username and password and LastPass says, should I keep that? And you're like, yeah. And then you put it in the folder with the client. And so then every time you go to that, um, that website, it'll auto-populate uh, with the username and password. And so for me, for example, like Constant Contact, I probably have 20 logins. So what I do is I just click and I click who I wanna be and I click on that name and it puts the right password in and I'm in. So it saves me hours. Um, and there's a, a more secure version, it's $10 a year. So I have that because I wanna make sure my client stuff is taken care of. Um, Dell, I used to recommend, I need to update this slide. Um, uh, I don't anymore. Now there's a, a company in um, Yonkers, they're also in Boston, it's called Micro Center. I love them, I love them. Um, and they have a computer called a PowerSpec. Uh, and what it is, it's, it's, a, it's a computer that um, developers have built that doesn't have all that McAfee, you know, bloatware, all that stuff. Um, so you just really get what you need and it, it just, it's really fast. And I've had one now for a year and a half and I'm very happy. Um, but it's, it's worth the drive over there. And then Teamwork is the project management software that I use. And I'm gonna talk more about project management in a bit. Does anyone have questions about tools? Yep. Oh, um, Carbonite? Yeah, I used to use that, but I found it to be redundant. So this is my strategy, for better or for worse. So I kind of figure if, if something happens, if, if something happens at, to Dropbox and it's corrupt, it's on my laptop too, and my laptop's not on all the time, so I could disconnect my laptop from the internet, I could turn that off and then have, because it's all on my hard drive as well, it's on the hard drive of my laptop, it's on laptop, my desktop, and then for a while it was even on Greg's, as, just as an extra safety. Um, but I feel confident in it. Any other questions about tools? Yeah, this is, this is like, yeah, how I do it. Well, that's the thing. So I should have said this. So I'm almost in eight years, right? So when I first started out, if someone would have given me everything I know right now, it would be like drinking from a fire hose. So all that relationship marketing stuff, like I started, I did a newsletter. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just do that for a while. And then I added in the keep in touch emails and then I added in the coffee and then I added send out cards probably came in just, you know, like year four. So it's a little bit at a time. So in the beginning, um, I didn't have any of this. I used to track my time on a piece of paper and, and then it just, as it got, this, this is the key. As your business progresses and it gets more complex, it's really important to stop as soon as something's not working and fix it. So for a while, I was tracking time. Um, I was doing it like with my fingers in a three by five card because I was trying to decrement the time and math is not my strength. And it's, it was not even math, it's just like this backward way of thinking. And so my boyfriend's a CPA and he really likes me. So he made this spreadsheet for me. So now I just put how much time people use and how much time they buy. And then it shows me how much they have left. But I, there's some stuff I couldn't, I just couldn't make that work. I couldn't make, I know Excel really well, but I couldn't make it do the time backwards. It wouldn't, anyway, so you just have to stop in that moment of this is making me crazy and then, you know, take the next, the next step. Could you talk a bit more about your duplicate? I can cut one of these into, I don't know, 50 of them separate. Right. What could I do all this work? Well, the primary thing I use it for is um, email. So it's, um, I just like the interface. Um, the other thing I like about it is it um, integrates with a lot of things very easily. So for example, my contact management software, Contactually, it's connected to Gmail. So when someone emails me, their contact autom information automatically goes into my contact manager so I don't leak people. And then I can put them in the keep in touch bucket or you know different ways that I organize people. So that's one reason. Um, Drive is really good because you can collaborate. So you can have, so for example, I'm working on a new project and my VA is helping me. So we have a spreadsheet. You can't use it like you can Excel. It's just really like boxes. But we're trying to figure out a strategy for doing something. So she works on it. I can see it. I can add to it. Um, so 
it works well with that. It's, so that's what I use it for mostly when I have to, or I have to share information with clients real time. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anything else about the tools? All right, so really take the time, figure out what you need um, because it makes a huge difference. So um, this um, is really just because you can doesn't mean that you should do it all by yourself. There's, um, and it's, it is hard because I think a lot of times entrepreneurs are really capable people. Like I could do my taxes, but are you kidding me? You know, it, it would take me a lot, a lot longer. Um, the, and so there are, there are really things that it's important to look at. Am I adding value or is that something someone else can do? Now, the, the, one of the keys to delegating, delegating is hard and not many, and it takes a lot of practice. Um, and one of the keys is to make sure that you're being clear in your instructions. So when I first started and it was just me, I could track my clients with notebooks. So I had these notebooks from Staples. Each client had, it was written on the front. It was really easy. I had a to-do list. It was simple. Um, and then I used Asana, which is a free tool. And it's essentially an um, online to-do list. You can also assign tasks in Asana. And then probably a lot of you have heard of Basecamp. Basecamp's another one. I really tried it. I didn't like it. I still have to use it for one client, but it's, it's I, th and that's the other thing. If you try a tool and you don't like it, like get a new one. There's so many project management softwares. I, there's probably 20 that I don't even know about. So if you don't like it, there was something about Basecamp I couldn't add a note without closing this thing that I needed to see. I'm like, ugh. So, I left. Um, then Trello. Trello is sort of a Pinteresty kind of a. There's boards and you move things around, and that's not really me, but a lot of people like it. And then I like teamwork. Teamwork is um, it's more Excelish, you know. It's just more uh, lists and check boxes, and it's it's not pretty, um, but it I, I like it. This is, um, and this is what um, something in teamwork looks like. So the reason I wanted to show you this, so when I have, an, um, when I have a, um, a process that's repeated over and over, I make a template. So this is my template for a new debit card client. So when someone starts to work with me, the first thing that happens is Rachel, my VA, um, sends a welcome email. Now I wrote it, it was edited, she doesn't wing it, it's like, this is what we do. In fact, it's, she can't even edit it, not that I don't trust her to, but it's just set up in that way. Then the next day, she sends my W9 to my client because I realized they kept asking me for it during the year, so I thought, well, why don't I just give it to them? So what happens next is she sends them the W9. If I could click the more button, which I can't because this is a picture, the actual email that she sends them is there because my brand and the way I want to talk is not no worries, no problem, it's my pleasure, I'm happy to help you. So that's the way that that's written. So that that gives her specific instructions, and it does a couple of things. It lets my clients know I have a VA, it lets them know how to get in touch with her, and it, it, it um, establishes further the relationship. VA virtual. Yes, sorry, yeah, yes, mm -hmm. yes. So Rachel lives in California, I've never met her, um, and, we, and we work together in this fashion, and I'm gonna talk more about how we got to this point in a second, but these are all the steps. So when you're delegating, it's important to do a couple of things. One, you wanna delegate one step at a time. I didn't say onboard Susie. I was like, <laughs> it's like, do these 16 things. And some of them are mine and some of them are hers. So I have these little rocket pens that I send new clients. So I think one of them is for me, I get an invoice with the address when someone signs up for a debit card. So is to send her send her the address so that reminds me because if I don't do that she can't send the pen another thing is I have to send her the um the message for the card right and then even though there's not always a referral gift this makes her ask me is there a referral gift and then we send something lovely from New Canaan olive oil so which is also systematized so Heidi at New Canaan olive oil I already went in there we figured it out all Rachel has to do is say do it again do it again. And it's the same box, the same stuff. So I'm trying to, I want to use my brain creatively to solve problems and not do the same routine stuff all the time. So this is how um, I use teamwork. But the, mostly what I, I want to stress here is that when you delegate, you have to give deadlines. That's not true. You need to negotiate deadlines. You need to say, 
I need this. Can you do it? Do you like to do it? If you don't like to, you don't, just because someone's smart. One of my clients, she hired her friend who was an attorney, and because she went to law school and she was really smart, she thought she could do constant contact. It's like, no. Um, it's a different skill set. So you just want to make, it's not that she couldn't, she just doesn't know how. So you want to make sure that you're having people help you that are qualified to do the actual work you need. And then the, the other piece of this is that sometimes people forget this is a relationship. When you're delegating, it's a human being on the other side, and you really need to nurture that. I know with Rachel in the beginning, um, we talked for 15 minutes or 30 minutes twice a week, and mostly we were talking about process and we were talking about how I worked and how we were going to work together, but I also wanted to know about our little girl named Lucy and her son and Camp, and she's a marathon runner. I want to have a relationship with her because she's helping me with my business. You know, it, our relationship is more if someone's newsletter comes in and I'm not expecting it and I can't do it right then, I'll go into Google Chat and say, hey, this just came. Can you do this by 5 o'clock tonight? If you can't, I'll fit it in, but do you, do you want the work? And she'll tell me, and sometimes she's at school with her kid and she can't, and okay, but sometimes she, mostly she can, and now I'm free to do what I want to do. And now we've even gotten to the point just recently, I thought, I don't need to set the project up. I can even have her set the project up in teamwork and then do it. And then I can you know, watch it, because as she checks each box off, I get an email. So I'm tracking it. No, but my best friend from high school lives really near her, and so I'm going to try to go out and see her. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fun. I have to say, though, most of my clients I've never met. In fact, one of them, this is funny, I went to a breakfast, and he was there, and I walked right up to him, and I gave him a big hug, and then I stepped back, and I said, we haven't actually met, have we? Yeah, yeah, but, um, but you know, you see their profile pictures, and I, I have my biggest client right now is in New Jersey, and We've been working together over a year. I've never met him, and we probably have only talked on the phone maybe five times. It's all in email. I mean, he tells so me... What are they asking you to do? What, I mean, you're a business manager. Right. So um, all different kinds of things. So for, like, my client, Michelle, she's a very high-end executive coach. So I onboard her clients. I help her get the statement of work. I help her... Um, with her PowerPoint presentation, she's really good at PowerPoint, but I'm good at noticing if, um, you know, when you switch, the words are jumping around or the bullets are a different color. I'm good at noticing patterns, so I just spruce it up. Um, other clients, like Bob, um, he's like, unbelievably successful. Um, he does coaching, and he helps. He just finished... Um, helping BMW with their C-suite presentations in Vegas, you know, those big meetings. And I schedule meetings for him four or five hours a week. So he's kind of a virtual assistant. That I am. I, I'm a virtual assistant, but the difference is, is that typically virtual assistants are, are um, told, told what to do and might have input. I actually help them figure out how to run their business. So someone, so like Nick came to me and he said, can you move all of my contacts from here to here? And I say to him, um, can we talk about that? And he'll say, sure. So I say, well, why do you want to go from here to here? And he tells me, I'm like, well, I don't think you need that. I think this would be better, and we could do it this way. And he either agrees or not, but he's the guy that I saved. It's like really $2,000 a month because somebody sold him HubSpot. Don't buy HubSpot. Um, um, so, but it is, it's a, re it's a relationship. So... Even though you, like I said, even though you can, there are things like I could do with that client onboarding, I could put my own newsletter into Mail MailChimp, but I find that if Rachel does it and I look at it, I can see the mistakes easy, more easily because I'm not in it. So it's, it's important. Again, like my newsletter, um, I write it, two other people look at it, and then I send it as a test to somebody else because I need, I, it has to be good. It has to be right. It's, you know, it's representing me. So I rely on other people all the time. And, and this last one um, is, a, is a big one, and my graphics guy, Mark, did that, which I totally love. Um, there are things that we need to, as business owners, we need to um, hold on to, some typical things. So with Mary, the client that I had that was um, being embezzled, she had, ac she had admin access to QuickBooks. She was not the administrator. That's a problem. Do you, do you see the difference? Like, okay. Um, I have had clients who we redo their website and we need the information um, where the um, domain is registered and we realize the guy that built the site before put it in his name. He owns it. 
Now, usually they're nice guys, and they're like, oh, I was just doing that to, you know, make it easy for you. But it, we ha now we have to transfer the domain. So there's certain things you need to know. If you're a small business owner and you're running a payroll, you don't need to know how to run payroll, but it's really important to know that, you know, well, whoever, you know, Judy is the payroll company and you do it every other Thursday. So if your business manager wins the lottery and goes to France and sends you a postcard, like there's certain things you need, you need to know. Passwords, who has access. Like, um, for example, um, so Rachel, so before Rachel, I hired a VA and she didn't work out. And I had, she had access to the passwords, but I gave them to her in a way that she could use the passwords, she couldn't see it, see them. And how she found out we weren't working together was she, I cut her access off. I mean, I did that before I called her to let her know that was gonna happen, but I had the ability to shut her down. You, as a business owner, it's not because I didn't trust her, it's because I'm responsible for these passwords. I'm responsible for my clients and my relationships. And so it's, um, it's, it's not with ending it in mind, it's with protection for everyone. So, um, so it's really important to, uh, to take care of details like that. And your virtual assistant can't get into all of your contacts and things like that? Like they can only go and let anybody go, they couldn't get into um, uh, She probably could do that, but I'm not worried about that for two reasons. Three reasons. One, over time, I trust her. Two, my contacts aren't really that valuable to her. And she signed in, uh, she can't compete with my clients. Yeah. So again, and, and would I, you know, it's kind of a tricky thing. Like my attorney in New Canaan was kind of scratching his head like, okay, she's there and you're here and you're working, you know, because it's kind of a new thing. So as any contract, I'd have to litigate Unless she really calls me harm, I probably wouldn't because, you know. But, but I sent a message. Like, I'm a businesswoman. I mean business. This is what I need you to sign. It was very straightforward. So she didn't have to go hire an attorney. Um, but it, it's important to, to set the tone. Because hiring someone to come into my business was pretty scary. Um, because it's me. How did you find her? <laughs> Um, so how I found her was um, I put an ad on Craigslist. It was a very specific ad. I'd hired people in the, my corporate past. So um, I was very forthcoming and this is what I need. This is who it's got to be. And then I, I don't remember what it was, but I said something like, um, do these three things when you apply. And if they didn't do those three things, they weren't hard. It was like, send a cover letter, let me know why you want the job or what, you know, something. And if they didn't do that, I responded back and said, thank you. But I didn't even look at their resume because my thought was if, when everyone's on best behavior and trying to get the job, if they can't hear me, if, then we're not a good fit. So I narrowed it down from 60 people to five. Um, and then I got it down to two. And Originally, I hired one, and she was working out so well that it scared me. So I hired another one to be like the backup because I was my business grew really a lot that year, and I was afraid that if I, I couldn't absorb what Paula was doing, so I hired Rachel to start to learn. And then when Paula took a turn the other way, Rachel was right there. So it was a pro it was a it's it was interesting because a lot of people think virtual assistants just mean someone that's working virtually that's an assistant and it's not they have very specific skills in in my case they need to know mailchimp constant contact they need to know how to update a wordpress website um, there's just a skill set that my business requires and do you pay her hourly mhm mm i do no no i used to struggle with that um, but no, I honestly, um, I, I don't want the small talk or the water cooler stuff. I have enough of that. I do have friends that I call, like I'm on the treadmill every morning and I talk to my friend while I'm you know, doing my miles and um, I have enough social interaction, but I really like to work and I wanna get down to it. And I have you know, two or three minutes with, I'm on the phone all day long with clients and we do a little, you know, hi, how's it going? But no, I, I don't wanna, I, I just wanna do the work. Yeah, because I can, I can crank, you know, I can bill, sometimes I can bill 11 hours in a day. For virtual assistant, one thing that I knew about it, I didn't have anything to say to my husband, I just didn't know about it. For virtual assistant, my phone was a paralegal, and I needed someone to do the quickly, and I did want to ask anybody. Well, I'll tell you how I handle that. Um, 
So the, I have one client, Sarah, who I love. She lives in Texas, and she does a newsletter, and it's always the last minute. So, so but she warns me. So we, uh, we have a deal. So she'll tell me, she'll send me an email that says incoming, you know, so I, I know. And then I can, I can get ready for it. And, and then she'll say, I'm gonna have it to you probably, you know, Wednesday at two. So I just block some time on my calendar and I just do it Wednesday at two. So you, if, if you're clear about the expectation and what you need, same with my editor. I, like, I have a newsletter coming out next week and on Monday, after it goes through a couple of whatever I have to do, I'll let her know it's coming and say, when's the window? And she'll say, Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. And so then I get it to her and so I, oh, sorry, I work, I work around it. But if that, that can work. I do a lot of last minute stuff, I, like all day. I'm at my desk all day and people know that. That's the other thing that works is as a business, my, in my business to be accessible. But you can work with people. So um, these are the things that we talked about. And I could talk about them all day, but I want to make sure I answer all of your questions. So.